أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نبده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حقا تقاته ولا تأمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واهدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يؤت الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan the rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out and offering our Jummah Salah. Alhamdulillah, Indeed, all praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we seek His help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from our souls, evils, and, ro and our wrongdoing. He whom Allah guides, no one can misguide. And he whom He misguides, no one can guide. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who did not create jinn and mankind except that they sh should worship him alone. He did not grant them except that they should worship he did not grant them with his favors except that they should praise him. He has not revealed his books and sent his messengers to them except that they should know him by his names and attributes. I offer thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming from a slave who fears him and hopes in him. Praise it. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone without partners who is never asked about what he does while we ask his creation about all that they do. I bear witness that Muhammad upon whom he peace is Allah's slave and messenger who called his ummah to Tawheed and commanding them to fear Allah and avoid his wrath. O oh Allah, bestow your peace and blessings on your slave and Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his progeny, his companions who aided and helped him. Alhamdulillah, for today's goodbye, I have chosen a very, you know, interesting topic, and that is the everlasting life after death. 
which is in either paradise or hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth and all life forms that exist in them in six days. Then he created man, mankind, and placed him in the earth and let the whole of his creation be tested for mankind to see which of them is best in deeds. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وهو الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام وكان أرشه على الماء ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا and he it is who has created the heavens and the earth in six days and his throne was on the water that he might try you which of you is best in deeds holy quran chapter 11 ayah 7 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained that our whole life is but a test and a trial to see who amongst us will perform the best deeds according to his will and commands. All of our different abilities, including academic, economic, social, political, skills, etc., etc., were not given to us as a test to see how we would perform. Who among us would use our God-given abilities to perform good or evil deeds. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَرَفَعَ بَعَدَكُمْ فَوْكَ بَادٍ دَرَجَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ فِي مَا آتَاكُمْ He has raised you in ranks, some above others, that he may try you in the gifts he has given you. Chapter 6, Ayah 165. My dear believing brothers and sisters, these tests were not designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to know how we would perform during our earthly life. For he knows the result of our performance before he created the heavens and the earth. The test and results are for us to know the supremacy of Allah's justice. For he is the best of judges. Because on the day of resurrection, when some of us will be thrown in the hellfire and some of us will be admitted in paradise, we will know what it is because of the deeds, good or evil, that were committed by us during our worldly life. Some of us may look upon these tests as a burden and are beyond our abilities to perform. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he does not place on us a burden greater than we can bear. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا أسها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت On no soul does Allah place a burden greater than it can be it gets every good that, is, that it is earned, and it suffers every ill that it earns. Chapter 2, Ayah 286. Whatever test Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns for us, He gives us the means and the ability to perform. 
Our tests and trials do not follow each other in succession. After every test and trial, there is a period of ease. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran, Verily, every, with every difficulty, there is relief. Chapter, 80, chapter 94, Ayah 6. Another test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through is death and life. He who created death and life, that he may try you, or may try which of you is best in these, and he is the exalted, the might of forgiving. Again, this ayah is taken out from chapter 67, ayah 2. My dear brothers and sisters, you know, when you take up this Quran, and you, started to re and you start to read, and you know the meaning of it, it makes your heart tremble. It makes your heart tremble. It makes your hair raise. Because this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is his command. We, as human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Places us in this earth and he has placed us for a purpose and that purpose is worship we have this Quran we have this book with us revealed to us this Ummah brothers and sisters let us take this Quran let us take this Quran read and try and understand it let us try and put some of these, what we read and learn in our life. Because this world, this dunya, what we are living in, is only a test for us. The hereafter is the everlasting life. And that is where we will be heading to. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the way we would perform before he created the universe. When we run into tribulations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us realize the consequences of our evil deeds. For perhaps we may turn back from living a life of evil to living a life of good. True justice for good or evil cannot be achieved in this life. Only the day of resurrection when all mankind will be brought back to life and made to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, he is the best of judges. Will it be achieved? Justice in this life is based upon wealth, ethnicity, social status, nationality, etc. But in the next life, it will be based upon the performance of good and evil deeds that were achieved by us with the gifts and the skills that were given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during our life in this world. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us 
إن الله لا يظلم مثقال ذرة وإن تقو حسنة يدائفه لد وإن تقو حسنة يدائفه ويؤتي لدن أجرا عظيما Surely, Allah wrongs not even of the weight of an autumn or a small ant. But if there is any good done, he doubles it and he gives from him a great reward. Chapter 4, Ayah 40. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Holy Quran and of the other divine revelations and through his prophets and messengers that were sent to humanity with true guidance of a life after death and of a paradise and a hell as a reward for good or evil deeds. Those people who cannot be brought to justice in this world must be judged and rewarded for the evil that they have unleashed on society. Oppressors, dictators, tyrants, evil people, those who have killed thousands and thousands of innocent men and women and children, those who have enslaved humanity, etc., they all must be brought to justice. Likewise, all of Allah's prophets and messengers and their followers must be rewarded for the good that they brought to humanity and for the persecution and death that they were unleashed upon them by evil people because they reminded humanity of the existence of Allah and to live a life of good instead of a life of evil. Alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, in order for true justice to be achieved, there must be a life after death and a day of resurrection, or else our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be meaningless, and our creation and the creations of the heavens and the earth would have served no purpose. The ultimate creation of humanity is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has stated in the Holy Quran. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created the jinns and mankind that they may worship me. Chapter 51, Ayah 56. The heavens and the earth were created for a purpose and in truth. And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَإِنَّ السَّاءَةَ لَآتِيَاتِ We created not the heavens and the earth and all that is between them except with truth and the hour is surely coming. Chapter 15, Ayah 85. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his creation for a true, just and righteous purpose and not for mere sport and play. The Prophet peace be upon him said, when a human being is laid in his grave and his companions and he even hears their footsteps. When a man or a woman dies and enters the grave, he is brought back to life and he is shown his place in the paradise or hellfire and he will realize which of them will be his final destination. Then a partition is placed between him and this wall and he will not be able to re-enter back into the wall. 
he will be held in a state of suspension until the day of resurrection when he will be resurrected. Again in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us the meaning of which in falsehood will they be until when death comes to one of them. He says, O oh my Lord, send me back to life in order that I may walk righteousness in the things I neglected. By no means it is but a word, he says. Before them is a partition till the day they are raised up. Then when the trumpet is blown, there will be no more relationships between them and that day. No one will ask after another. Then those whose balance of good deeds is heavy, they will attain salvation. But those whose balance is light will be those who have lost their souls. In hell will they abide. The fire burn their faces and they will therein grin with their lips displaced. Quran chapter 23, ayat 99 to 104. Brothers and sisters, it may seem strange to think that people who have died thousands and thousands of years ago would be waiting for thousands of more years before they will be brought back to life in the state of life after death. A man enters into another time zone where time is irrelevant. Time only counts in this life and all those thousands of years that are spent in the grave will be only like the twinkling of an eye. And when they are brought back to life, he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, what number of years did you stay on earth? They will say, we stayed a day or part of a day. Ask those who keep account. He Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you stayed not but a little. If you had only known, did you think that we have created you in play without any purpose and that you would not be brought back to us for account? Evil deeds and sins may seem fashionable because they are committed by thousands and thousands of people. But once an action or thought has been declared a sin by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they remain a sin until the end of the world. People commit evil deeds and sins until they are faced with death. Then they repent. But that sort of repentance is not good. Of no effect is the repentance of those who continue to do evil until death faces one of them and he says, now I have repented indeed, nor of those who die rejecting faith, for them have we prepared a punishment most grievous. Chapter 4, Ayah 18. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this life. This life is short. This life is only temporary. We have to go. Every day that passes by, you hear about this brother die or this sister die. Who will be next? Our time is coming. Our time is running out. We are heading every day closer to the grave. Let us all try and obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow in the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If there is no life after death, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributes of justice, mercy and forgiveness will have no meaning. Today we see, oh, when we put on that news in our television, every day somebody, you know, people are killing one another. Just before I come in and I just put on the news, I see where a young lady, 19 years old, was shot 
working in a donut store was shot and killed. 19 years. And what? Killed. Every day we see life, is, it comes meaningless to some of us. It comes meaningless. And this is a life which is sacred. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could only give us life. No one. When that life, when the angel of death take our souls and reach to the collarbone, is there anyone who could put it back inside? No. The best of doctors cannot do it. That life, that time is expired and we have to go. So let us all prepare for that everlasting life. This life is short. It is play and amusement. If we read the Quran, we will see there are many, many ayats in the Quran telling us about this life. This life ends with death. And the first place after death is where the grave. We will be heading to that grave. And as soon as that, uh, the last person leaves there, what happens? The two angels, the questioning angels, will question us in that death. That is our next life. That is our next world. Are we prepared for that? Brothers and sisters, we have time. Don't let this time go. Don't procrastinate. Let us all try and prepare something for the morrow, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct us all to the blessings of the noble Quran and benefit us in what is in it of the ayats and the wise I say this and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the great and the most honored for forgiveness for me, you and all Muslims for every sin. Seek his forgiveness for he is most forgiving, most merciful. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azabina. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بآيات الذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جوار كريم الملك بر الحمد لله الحمد لله نفمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله ون ون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نبده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي الله ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأعداد من صلى وصام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد بأعداد من قاد وقام وصل على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى كل ملائكة المقربين وعلى إباد الله الصالحين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإيسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبق يا إذوكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أولى 
wa aula wa azu wa ajallu wa atamu wa ahamu wa akbar aqimis salat